So I'll be joined by uh, Benis Abubeidu Lansa, and uh, we'll do a review of the newspapers very soon. But I hope that you loved that song. And um, Trevor McCoy featuring the man there, Bruno Mars, an all-time favorite uh, for many of us who tend to love uh, pop. And, uh, well, Derek, of course, Sam chose it. And sponsored by Patrick Gomez, the lead director for this morning. So we'll take you through a couple of the newspapers we have in the studio. And uh, we will have uh, some reviews on them as well. Let's start with the Ghanaian Times. That's on the front page. Labor unrest looms as TUC laments unfairness in implementation of the three-tier pension scheme. I've also been joined by Gifty and Oapia. Gifty, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Roland. Well, nice having you. Yesterday you vanished. <laughs> I overslept. Yeah, great. You overslept. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a good friend of mine, um, the acting general manager for Road Safety Management Services Limited, Nana Jim Fikesi. Um, he says that he really likes you. Oh wow! You, sh you could have told me behind the scenes, actually. You know. Okay, I shouldn't have said that it on okay. air. All right. We'll see I, I like him too. Right, right. Um, so, uh, which newspapers are you doing, Gifty? I have the BNFT, the Business and Financial Times, and um, I have the uh, Daily Dispatch newspaper. I also have, I think, the Daily Guide. I can start with the BNFT. Please do. Okay, BNFT banner headline, uh, headline, as more companies go solar, energy ministry worries about ECG's viability. Oh, really? Stories on page three, anyway. Dr. Edith Dankwa, BNFT CEO, to inspire the youth on YFM's Y Leader Board series. Story there as well. And finally, an initiative to create an opportunity for wealth creation. And then there's a story about um, is that I am MIA, MIIF set up by law uh, with mandates to raise money from investors using mineral rights revenue okay mineral right revenue is always a big story uh, to discuss but uh, it looks very tiny it's you know hiding somewhere very tiny on the front page of a bnft uh, for those who are interested to go after it uh recalcitrant chinese owned trawler re-licensed despite committing same illegal fishing offenses twice and failing to pay fine that's a story that breaks my heart uh, this is a story that we've done sex a cycle and we saw how you know things are done with this story is talking about a recalcitrant chinese owned trawler that has received another license despite illegal offenses it's been caught uh, uh doing i would love to read that story um it's, it looks just a little bled uh, uh, on this side for me uh, maybe Roland, you can help me with the maybe at the first and second paragraph, so we know what who this Chinese or which this Chinese company is, mm. and why they've had to be relicensed despite illegal offenses. Uh, 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 I mean, offenses, illegal fishing offenses that they've been involved in. Mm. Um, well, going forward, government to announce big initiative on value addition to minerals. Well, we've heard that over and over again and it's long overdue, an AFDB 2020 annual meetings, building Africa back better after the COVID-19 pandemic. A story there on second page of the newspaper, BNFT page three has a picture of the energy minister. As more companies go solar, energy ministry worries about ECG's viability. I don't know, I, 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 I really don't know. Uh, Dr. Edith Dankwa, okay, that story, those are the stories on the front page. You find them on the third page or page three of the BNFT. This is the back page of the BNFT. Vodafone Foundation settles bills of 106 needy patients to mark World Humanitarian Day. A demos resources directed to deliver and Zama mines gold into custody of Bank of Ghana. Wow. And Wombat 400 commits to make Ghana worm free. Those are the stories that you find in the BNFT. You want to grab yourself a copy, take a look at some of the stories, um, especially about the recalcitrant Chinese and what uh, a company that has been relicensed about also um, uh, revenue, mineral revenue, and how we're managing it here in Ghana. I'm moving on to the Daily Dispatch newspaper. Good morning to Ben Efson, um, editor in chief of the newspaper. 
battle for Damo seat. Mm. Can NPP's Abu Jinapo beat NDC's Mutawakilu? Story is on page 12 when it comes <laughs> to the picture of Big the question. deputy. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, please continue. Uh, uh -huh, right, okay. Are you saying that good question? Yeah, good question. <laughs> okay, we'll see how that goes. So that's the MPP's uh, Abu Jinapo, the deputy chief of staff, and um, the NDC's Mutuakilu. You know, nice men. We'll see how they slug it out there and what the people think about them in the constituency. But Ahoy reveals an unpublished open letter to Rawlings. See page 11 for that story. It comes with a picture of Professor Kwame Ahoy and former President Rawlings and Ekufuado's speech at the NPP's 2020 manifesto launch. They have it on in full on page two of the Daily Dispatch newspaper. We'll take a look, a quick look at the inside pages of some of the papers. So you have the story about Mr. Professor Ahoy and then Chief of Staff, Gender Minister, Inspect Hot Meal for JHS students. One of my highlight stories uh, from yesterday, about the way the students were reacting, those in Bogatanga, very interesting responses there. And then yes, you have the full text there. Green Street registers landslide victory to lead CPP into 2020 election. Okay, and on the back page of the newspaper, you have the battle for the Damango seat story itself there with Ms. Alhaji Muswakilo, and then the uh, chief of staff, deputy chief of staff, Abu Jinapo. And then you even, they even have a picture of both, you know, the two Jinapos, one in NDC, one in NPP, John Jinapo of the NDC and Abu Jinapo of the NPP. I, this three days ago, I was just talking to somebody and this family actually came up. <laughs> okay, so I'm moving on to the daily guide, but I think Roland, you should uh, come in a bit uh, so I don't sound monotonous. You know, okay, I mean. great. Uh, I have um, Benice also here, so Benice can come in with a daily graphic, I believe. Sure, definitely. Hello, Gifty. Hey, Benice. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you, too. Let's start with the Daily Graphic. A Japan royalties goes public, listed on Ghana London Stock Exchanges by December. And, guys, you know this story has been very controversial. And uh, on, on, on PM Express last night, we had Information Minister admitting that the son of the senior minister is, is part of the whole arrangement. But he questions what the problem is there. He, he mentions his track record, says... He's into this. He's been doing this for a very long time. So it's much ado about nothing. Well, still on the front page of the Daily Graphic, TUC petitions president over SNIT lump sum payment and APC acclaims Hassan Ayariga flag bearer. One whole meal a day, chief of staff advises students to focus on studies. Let me quickly bring you what's on the back page. Don't engage in Galamse outside community mining. And 30 drug peddlers arrested at Bar Chona. All right, so um, you can do the next one. Sure. Uh, the Daily Statesman has NPP 2020 manifesto, foreign trained doctors to get hope. You know, the doctors who are trained, most of them uh, I know in China, Ukraine, Cuba, enter the country and sometimes it's so difficult to get into the system first you have to write exams even after that it's difficult to absorb them so the MPP is saying look we're going to streamline that we're going to see how we can work at that and uh, Kufado's policies are life-changing information minister says MPP takes manifesto promises serious and Muhammad Dodges voted journalist over Ahoy's books so the Daily Statesman reports that to avoid being questioned on the controversial Working with Rollins book, authored by Professor Kwame Nahoy, mm -hmm. the former president dodged media personnel in the Volta region last week after an initial plan to meet them. Uh, well, they are saying that as part of his campaign tour, he had arranged to meet the journalist, and in an invitation letter to the Volta region chapter of the Ghana Journalists Association, which was signed by James Gunu, regional secretary of the Position National Democratic Congress, the party requested that the journalist meet them. So the journalist came. But he didn't show up, and oh. and I don't think that's that's that, nice. That, it's not fair at all. That's uh, bad, PR. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're not good at all. And so that's, that's what we have here. We have some sports on the back page of the Daily Statesman. Champions League final. New format was exciting, but only as a one-off. I, I hear from the UEFA president that they are going to deliberate over this if they should stay to their you know one game 
for this quarter and semi-finals instead of the home and away you mean they used to do. post-corona? Yeah, so the discussions okay. about that, that post-corona. Well, yeah, yeah we, I, I, I heard him on the sports news this morning. And Balotelli talking to various clubs. I haven't but, uh, heard from him I, in a long I, time. I, I think that one-off is not going to do. It used to be back in the day when they used to do one-off mm -hmm. uh, for the latter stages of the competitions. And um, I'm thinking for for the good of the game to mm. broaden it, to make fans enjoy it. But because what's, what's, what, apart from fans enjoying it, what's the whole concept of home and away? Because when you bring it to World Cup, for example, you, you know, you do the group stages. Once you cross that, it's, it's knockout, you know, yeah, and okay. you don't well, play for I, second I, I, leg I, I, If I remember vividly, what used to exist was mm. they'll play it in the home of one of them. But mm -hmm. then that was also lotted. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? But this one, they're they they playing it in a neutral venue. So that's the difference now. If it's a neutral venue, a one-off game, fine. But I think the the two-legged or the two-legged game, mm -hmm. I think it's the vibe of anticipation that maybe I didn't do well, I did well, and I can get better it's the next an one. An opportunity to redeem yourself, I well, guess. You can say, or not even redeem yourself. <laughs> or still be trounced, you know. Yep. Okay. A gift to you can continue with the rest of the papers you have. I certainly was going to. So um, let's see. So that was the uh, Daily Guide newspaper. Final headline. Pressure on NBC to launch manifesto as some more. And then a free meal <laughs> for JHS. Free meal for JHS students starts. And there is a picture um, of the gender and social protection minister with some children in their, mm -hmm. uh, well, they're the children, some young mm -hmm. people there, sharing, sharing some food. And free Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a free meal for GHS students start. Mahama Okada proposal catches fire. So I find it really interesting how, okay, that's a different story. So there's pressure on NDC to launch manifesto, and then there's a picture of former President John Mahama. Then beneath it, there's Mahama Okada proposal catches fire. I see page three. I want to see what's on page three and how the thing has caught fire. Mm -hmm. um, then the suspect police study killer fetish priest calls charts. Okay, hold on. The story is police steady killer. Fetish priest calls chat. Okay. Police steady killer fetish priest calls and chat. So police has been studying the chats and calls of a killer fetish priest. <laughs> okay. I hope that makes sense to our viewers. And Nana targets first round MPP majority. See story on mm. page six. You mm. remember at the uh, manifesto launch that the president said, you know, was hoping to get a one touch yep. sort of uh, mm. win. Gifty. Right. And yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, that free meal for JHS students, the photo attached mm -hmm. to that is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't remember yeah. ever seeing anyone give packs of food and open the food for cameras to capture the contents of it. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm just wondering. This is, GH. this is GH for you, lady. This is GH for you. Okay, what? so, I, you know, I didn't really see it properly, but now that you said it, mm -hmm. I can see it mm -hmm. with, oh, erratic. I mean, I mean, I don't know. There's an it's egg? great. It's great. The children, the, the young people themselves are happy about it. But really, to open it up, let me just finish with the back page of sure, the sure, Daily sure. Guy and then we'll come to it. <laughs> the back page of the Daily, Daily Guy says, NPP deputy scribe slams GFA. Uh, Pambo appointed AFA anti-doping vice president. And, and that's Dr. Prince Pambo there. He's one of the people behind the Mango Tideke uh, mm. project. The, the Paddy's Club that funded the Mango Tideke uh, Birthing Center. He is the former president of that group. So I want to give him a shout out this morning for that. Dr. Prince Pambo, wherever he is, thanks to him and the Paddy's team. Uh, police arrest 148 after PSG loss uh, and 2.4 million more than Bayern. And then Suarez faces Bar Barca sack. Then there's a public announcement. So, Bernice, back to the mm. jollof rice. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, seriously, I don't know. I really don't know who advised them to do this. But, I mean, sometimes we overdo some of these things mm -hmm. and it gets really tacky and it gets, uh, I mean, I don't know, jollof rice, like one pack of jollof rice. We know that the president, you know, is mm. saying, you know, we should give the, 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 the kids food. And it's great. Yesterday I had, I mean, I didn't think it was such a big deal until I had the children themselves say, 
uh, all sort of nice things. They said mm -hmm. how it made them concentrate, how they were excited for the JHS to them. They were saying this is the first time they were getting food. I mean, they sounded excited. And I thought, oh, wow, it was good after all. But I mean, seriously, open up a jollof rice and take a picture for the day. But, but uh, it, it's, uh, I, I, I am thinking that it's only a photo session with one, and we don't even know whether that no, one was please. consumed. Yes, yes. Please, no, it's, please, Roland, please. I don't think it's about the consumption. It's it's basically about you know opening it up for the photo and, session. And, and, but but no, get to, you see the, to also the motive. They... What I what I what I want to believe is they want people to see their quality of food they're giving the kids you know because that has come into question one, a one lot <laughs> that's come to question a lot not only for the the, well, the on school social feeding media is program dominating different for, pictures, yeah. for for the pupils those in base uh, in in from primary but also yeah. about what was served during the COVID period you know there's been this whole fuss about quality of food from from government so okay. i want to believe that, that. that's I what they want to portray I get that perspective, but it still doesn't make sense. I mean, in the 21st century, I'll be shy to show this newspaper to um, um, my friends in developed countries and say, look, we are advertising how we're giving jollof rice. You know, rice, it's like rice that's cooked in stew or rice that's cooked in tomato sauce with one egg. For there's, I, there's actually and, some meat. I, I'm not able to determine if it's fish or meat, but there's well, something else. I'm, I'm basing my side. argument on what I heard the students from Boba Tanga say yeah, yesterday. That's fine. They were talking about, they said there's jollof and there's one egg, and they were very excited about it. But I'm saying that, I mean, it's fine, but to show it on, on the newspaper, I, don't, I didn't think it was necessary. Mm. It's, it's a waste of everybody else's time. But anyway, and, 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 and I think it's some sort, I, it feels mediocre, honestly. It feels mediocre. And that's just what I wanted to say. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, so apart from this, what's your pick? Um, um, since, I mean, Ben is, it's been a while since we had Ben Why don't we go for Ben okay. speak? Uh, okay. Ben what's occupied your mind, as you've seen in the headlines? It could be this uh, uh, you found in the newspaper today mm. or any other. But um, is this surprising? Well, I don't know if um, the papers didn't get that story, but we brought that story about Ms. Well being arrested. Um, mm. Gifty, I don't know if you've heard about that. And this is for alleged uh, spread of fake news. And uh, you also know that during the, the COVID-19 <laughs> period, the peak of it, during the early, um, um, early periods, the president announced the restrictions. There was a gentleman who went on WhatsApp and other social media platforms to say it was a hoax. And he's yeah. been arrested. He's actually being tried. I'm just bringing this in to let people understand that you can't just get up and say things about people. I think that we must begin to understand that people's reputation, you know, uh, people's yeah. homes, people's families are involved. So what we understand is that Stacey Amwati, who's a TV personality, has, you know, notified the police about some claims made by Ms. Bell. According to Ms. Bell, she was told by Prophet Nigel Gazy that the TV person uh, presenter has HIV. And you know the stigma around this disease already, Gifty. So mm -hmm. it's quite troubling that, you know, the, the musician could just say it like that. Um, yeah. But people also need to understand... To a place <laughs> where, I think we're getting to a place where some of these uh, media personalities are getting a bit, um, for me personally, uh, and anybody can take me on, uh, getting a bit reckless with the kinds of things that they say and the kinds of things that they do. It For me, it boils down to people wanting to trend. And I think that's the mm. latest craze that we mm. find. People think that, they, and we've seen a lot of people do outrageous things and they trend because, you know, it, it, this is Ghana. We know the way we have fun. But I think whilst we want to trend and how we want, well, whilst we want to do the outrageous things to trend, we should be mindful of breaking laws. We should be mindful mm. of what you said, other people's reputation. Mm. We should be mindful of our reputation as well. I mean, we'll leave the police to deal with it. Um, but it's been a while. Ms. Bell has been in the news for a while. Mm. Um, I hope that she's able to defend herself. But it's just a word out there to everyone, all of these you know, media personalities. Mm. And today in social media and there's a plethora of avenues where people can put, mm. you know, air their views, even if you don't get the chance to go on traditional radio and TV and all of that. Mm. So people are being a bit, a bit reckless, I think. Yeah, should, 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 uh, uh, really and I think we should take the opportunity to emphasize that using the expression alleged doesn't exempt you 
from a defamatory <laughs> suit and also simply because somebody said it so i am republishing what gifty said also doesn't yeah. exempt you and and, yeah. and and roland you know when we stream our our news online our content our content online people come to our comment section and sometimes say very you know unsavory uh, yeah and and unfounded no. things so we just need to be careful gifty sometimes yeah. it really hurts people we have no idea the kind of thing so let's just get that into our minds that you can't just get up and say anything about anybody simply because you don't like them you know True. let's just be careful sure, sure. Oh, i think yeah. roland what? I'm interested in the Ejapa story, mm. but I didn't have it here. Uh, you have it's... it there, so you'll know more about it. I think it's a story that we've been discussing yeah. for a while. Yesterday, we had the information minister speak to it. So mm. now we know that there is somebody behind it that is affiliated or that is uh, known to the government. I, I, I'm curious to find out what you guys think about how, I mean, the very delicate balance between the quality or qualification of a person and the tendency of conflict of interest because the person is directly um, linked to the people who give who give give, give this um, opportunities. I mean, there are so many other people who qualify for it, but well, mm, you look at mm. the part thing and how well, well they, 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 the the related it. issue about um, the management of the royalties as stated mm. within what the act establishing mm. uh, this whole structure is uh, is well laid out now if we have mm. a special purpose vehicle that is supposed to manage this i think then the concern is and this was posed uh, by evans mensan to the information minister uh, we have a company that is incorporated in a tax haven offshore um, usually it's legal, but then um, companies that are always incorporated offshore seem to have a certain tag around there, the Cayman Islands, the Bahamas, the you know, so they tend to have a certain tag around them. Now, too, if you have various directors or entities of uh, uh, public listed corporations, etc., who are supposed to undertake some work, then for public good, we have to make sure that those who are politically exposed don't have either their relatives, they themselves, playing critical roles. Because mm. then, it, yeah. I think, in my opinion, it smacks of double standards. Just pre-2017, Ibrahim Mahama was said to have had some mining concessions. Mm -hmm. And then we, this was uh, dominating the discussions within the structure of the election year in post-2017. Yes. Now... Uh, if we have a son of a senior minister, somebody who has occupied varied positions in mm. government before, now still occupies, uh, has a position in a public corporation, is also involved in this, yeah. though he has the experience. Mm. It is about um, the perception mm -hmm. about the conflict of interest situation. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that is what the information minister, even though... He is right in saying if the son or daughter of Roland Walker one day wants to occupy this and somebody raises a question, we shouldn't make it a matter. And, and, mm -hmm. and it is the conflict situation that I think that mm -hmm. we need to work out and try to explain to people that yeah. I am in a position of trust. I am in a position of favor mm -hmm. than the ordinary Ghanaian, let's say, who is living somewhere, also equally educated like me. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I think that's a, that's a mm -hmm. bigger question. And, 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 and it's mm -hmm. not as if somebody wants to bring anybody down, etc. No. I, I think that's a bigger question. Yeah. And I, no, I, I know mean, they are, they are watching the race questions, but, but, but those are the key country. issues. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Well, this is about our country. We have every right to comment on it, to have every right to share our thoughts and our views on it. I think, I th I think you 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 you. you said it you, you nail the the you, you nail it right there um they the the, the the i like the ndc bits that you brought in as well the mahama the ibrahim mahama bits and so it tells you at the end of the day that politicians will come in and they will do what they want to do they'll bring their families in and they will benefit them anyhow um ndc did it like you said i mean we saw it happen back then we're seeing it happen happen now i think that it will not change and it's mm. up to us the people of ghana to decide mm. or to de determine mm. what we want out of all of these and how much we speak about it how much we show that we detest it we don't mm. think it is right mm. it's up to us as yeah. for the politicians they always walk all over us it's up to us and what we do with our <laughs> national assets and i think another important question to ask guys is is he the only qualified person i think that when we are able to ask that question we can also 
let those in public office understand yeah. that your child may be qualified, but for the sake of, you know, preventing some of these perceptions okay. and good governance, Our you time should is just, up. Ladies. you know, just Seven let it go. Let someone else do it. Yeah, I know. We'll continue with this discussion in the meantime, <laughs> but we have to take a break and bring you sports. Um, thank you, Gifty, as well, for joining us this morning.